Welcome to the third video out of a four part series on the more advanced features of Sugarbytes Obscurium. Today we're going to be talking about the clock tab. And I'm using the quartz preset which is found in the Sonorian sub menu. Here's what it sounds like. Okay, so in the clock tab, we have a number of different things we can change. The first one is the clock speed or the step speed. This is how fast each step is. So if I bring this up faster, we just move across faster. And if I bring it down, we can get very slow all the way to whole notes. We have a direction which determines the direction the motion sequencer plays in. At the moment, it's set on forwards. We can make it go backwards. We can make it go forwards and backwards or backwards and forwards. We can go random, we can go every second step, every third step, and every fourth step. We have a swing slider to give it a bit of shuffle. The legato button determines what happens when you play a note when another note is being played. So with this off, I'm going to play a C, and when I play an E, you'll see the sequencer has restarted. If I have legato mode on, I'll play a C, and I'll play an E. You'll see the sequencer continues to play. The step keys mode assigns a key to a particular step. I've turned it on, and I'm going to click on C. It's just assigned to that step. If I move to G, it's assigned to that step. And if I play some notes on my keyboard, The step play mode moves forward a step whenever a new note is played. So I'm just going to hit the C key a few times. Now an E. If you hit two keys at the same time or play one when another is already held down, it restarts the sequence. Moving over to the obscure clock. When I turn this on, the master clock value is disabled and we get another eight step sequencer moving at quarter note values down here. Now you'll see each one, each step of these of this new sequencer allows us to change the actual step speed in the main motion sequencer. So I can have I can drag all these values up to different speeds and let's just play it. So that moves around um, for us and gives us a different way to control the speed of the motion sequencer. We have an obscure direction which allows us to determine the direction for a certain amount of steps. I'm just going to drag this down here. This is, determines how many steps this particular direction is going to play for. I'm going to drag it down to one vertically and then horizontally drag it across to copy it across. I'm then going to drag all these down so everything is going forward. I'm going to turn off the obscure clock for now and let's just play a note. So nothing new is happening right now. Every single step, it plays forward and then it does another single step, plays forward, etc. But I could change this to say on the, after playing one step forward, I want to play one step stopped. So this is a full stop. It will repeat the step. Let's see how that works. See how it pauses on that kind of second part of the sequence. We could say do that for eight steps instead. We could say here, play four backwards. Or we could say play 16 random. If you combine this with the obscure clock, you get really crazy chaotic results. It's quite fun. It's really fun to get a preset that you've made and just turn these on because you get a whole different sound. And that finishes the video on the obscure clock and the obscure direction.